I'm Katie Ellman reporting for Katie Chats at the Royal Cinema for the National Canadian Film Day. I'm here with Peter Callahan. How does it feel to be the voice of National Canadian Film Day? <laughs> Lauren Green wasn't available. <laughs> Gordon said no. He was busy. So, you know, they got down to me. So it feels great. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's a very worthwhile thing. It's a lovely thing. And The Grand Seduction has been the most popular Canadian film in that it's been, it's being screened at more theaters uh, and centers across Canada than any other film, and you're also in it. So what makes The Grand Seduction so special to you? Well, you know, it's just really well done, you know, and it has all the scenery to go with it. You know, it's, it's one of the stars is the scenery of Newfoundland. It's just an absolutely stunning looking thing. And uh, at the same time, it has to do it was for us, by us, about us, you know, and um, I think that really speaks volumes. We do a lot of touring with Real Canada. And we talk to, you know, kids that are in high school or, um, um, you know, new immigrants to Canada, and we say, do you think that this could be made by any other country besides Canada? And they said, well, yeah, the only thing that makes it Canadian is that it happens to take place in Canada, and really that's where we're going, I think. It's just good stories. It doesn't need to be stamped with a maple leaf or anything else. Mm -hmm. CanCon is all just, it's about the industry. It's about making movies by for us. And do you think there's anything specifically that Canadian filmmakers do that makes our films special and makes them important? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I defy anyone to say that, you know, Sarah Pauly and Don McKellar and all our great ones, Adam McGowan, don't keep up in the same genres as anybody else anywhere in the world, you know. And I think it's important to know that what we do in this country speaks to us. It, it has to speak to us because it's made here. And um, I think I've said this to you before, but I always thought that, you know, culture that comes from somewhere else is fast food culture. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it may be glitzy and addictive, but it's ultimately not very nourishing, or it's not as nourishing as, what, as, as the stuff we get on our own, make on our own. Totally. And do you have a favorite Canadian film? Oh, I have many. <laughs> if you had to choose, could you? <laughs> if I don't say The Rowdy Man, I'm in trouble. Okay. <laughs> the Rowdy Man, Gordon. And you also have a Murdoch Mysteries presentation coming up soon. So tell me a little bit about that. It's in the Distiller District. Yeah, Murdoch Mysteries is a bit of a machine. You know, they, they've been going on for now for about eight seasons. And now there's all these other things that are sprouting up with Murdoch Mysteries. In other words, we're doing this live show that has to do with the infernal device. And my character, Terrence Myers, is getting to the bottom of this bomb that's apparently going to go off with a visit of the princess from England. And she's half the city's going to be destroyed and, and the princess killed as well as, you know. Just another day. It's just another day in <laughs> Toronto in 1905. So um, yeah, it all it all comes to a head June 15th at the distillery in Toronto. So, but but part of the mystery takes place in London, England. It's huge in London and it's huge in Vancouver. So it's a, it's a pretty exciting thing. I mean, and that's you know one of the things about Canadian content that people don't realize. I think it's I think it's incumbent upon us to build it, and they will come. You know, uh, Orphan Black, uh, Murdoch Mysteries. These are hugely popular shows that hold their own with anything else anywhere in the world. And um, you know we can get over a little bit of our insecurity complex because of it. I think. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations on Murdoch and all of your work with uh, National Canadian Film Day. Thank you very much. Thank you.